So, well, I'm, I'm Ruben, uh, I work at HubSpot, and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, patterns in D3 for dynamic data visualizations. Um, so, basically, what is D3, for those that don't know what, what it is, is a visualization library that it, it is based on uh, web standards. So, basically, if you know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you pretty much will have a, a good time with uh, D3. And it's also like d data driven. So um, you pass data and callbacks and D3 will take care of, of uh, all the DOM manipulation. And so uh, these patterns that I'm going to show are useful when uh, you are um, building a dynamic uh, visualization. So if it's static, it doesn't make sense to use this. And uh, why, why are these patterns useful? So basically because uh, D3 reuse DOM elements. So it helps, it helps with performance and also um, it, uh, it reorders uh, existing DOM elements. So um, it adds meaning to visualizations. Um, also, um, so you can manipulate uh, differently uh, each element depending on the state that it is, that we will see later. And also uh, it's, it's more declarative. So you tell the three what, what, what you want to do and not how. And so this is the whole idea of, of the of the of the talk. Um, we bind data to the tree, and so each data point of of that data it, it will be an, an array. Um, it's at a given state uh, at a time. So there's three states, and it's like enter state, update state, and exit state. And so you access each state through a selector. So the enter state. Um, so we I'll, I'll go through the code and I'll explain what's what's going on here. So we have um, a div, is, uh, it's, it's going to be the container for, for the visualization. And so with D3, we basically select the container and then, they select, then we select all the spans within that container um, and we bind the data we want to use for the vis visualization. And you, you, might want, you might be wondering um, that uh, there's no span elements inside the container, right? Um, so that means that um, those data points will go through the enter selection. And so for that, we need to use the enter method that will return those, th in, in this case, those three data points because there, there's no span elements in the, in, in the selection. And so we have to append an element um, for each data point, and then we can start mani manipulating the, the visualization. So in this case, I just add um, the, the number itself. And so, you know, it, it, it's basically the what's happening here is like um, the page starts plank and then, you know, it, it, it renders the zero, one, and two. Um, then the update state, uh, it happens when there's actually um, elements in your selection in the DOM and um, there's data points that match those elements. So in this case, the page starts uh, with um, two elements and that contains eight and four. And so we do three, we, we do basically the, the same than before. We select the container, we select all the spans inside the container element and we bind the data. Um, so since uh, those um, there's span elements, uh, they will go through the update selection and, and then we can manipulate uh, those elements. Um, if we wanted in this case to add the value two, that is the third element in the data array, we would have to use the enter selection that we saw before because basically there's no span elements to, to match that, that element. And the exit selection, um, it's used when there's not enough uh, ele elements in the new, I mean, there's not enough data points in the new data array passed to match all the elements in the selection. So in this case, we have four elements in the, in the container. And so in this case, um, I, I basically update the three elements that match in the update selection. So it renders zero, one, and two. And then if the code stopped there, it would also render the last element in the, in this, uh, the, the last span, which is like four but uh, I can use the exit selection to remove that, that uh, last element. And so um, if you look at these previous slides, um, I, I talk about like uh, DOM elements matching data points. So how does D3 figure out what elements, what, what data points will match what DOM elements? So by default, it's, it's uh, figured out by index. So if there's more uh, data points than uh, DOM elements, um, it, it will go through the enter selection and such. But um, we can pass a key function. So the key, func the key function will be used to um, tell D3 which elements um, were already in the DOM and which elements are new. So 
if, uh, for example, uh, well, um, so, yeah, I, I cannot make an example uh, out of this, but uh, uh, it basically, I, I in, in, in this example, I, I'm using an ID. So if there was a, an, a data point with that ID before, it will go through the update selection, and if it wasn't before, it will go through the uh, enter selection. And uh, well, I don't know if there's time for that, but uh, made a quick uh, example. Um, so what's happening here is that uh, I style the new elements with green and uh, the black elements are, so, so green elements go through the uh, enter state, black elements go through the update state, and red elements go through the exit state. So you can see how uh, I, I manipulate differently its state. And yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, if you want to see the code, uh, well, just, well, it's, it's uh, the, the, the link is in the slide. So yeah, um, I can go through the code if there's time. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> uh, so the green uh, green numbers go go through the enter state. Uh, the black numbers go through the update state, and the red the numbers go through the uh, exit state. Uh, so wh what I'm doing here is basically uh, I have a function that uh, returns a, a random uh, length uh, of of uh, random numbers, and so I have a set interval that uh, renders the, the, the visualization itself. And so what the visualization is doing is basically, well, selects the container, and then um, selects all the span elements and binds the, the new data. So this is the update selection, for example. And wh what I'm doing here is reorder the uh, existing elements in the DOM. So the, the, these are the black elements. Um, well, and you can use all, uh, you, you can use also transitions and like so many things. Um, the uh, the enter state, uh, I basically use a class that you know uh, ma makes them green and uh, transitions, and uh, it starts with like a small size font, uh, small font size, and uh, so the, the cool part about this is also that uh, if you do uh, if you call transition and then you can also use like um, ease and duration, but um, the code that goes after that will take will will um will be um will will take the that, that time to like uh, appear so it, it it appear um from like nothing or from the previous state to this state in like seven seven hundred fifty milliseconds um so here well yeah um here is the exit state and yeah it basically ma makes them uh small font size and and then the i i remove the uh, the elements that I'm, I'm not using. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay.